How's it going everybody? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about can money buy happiness? So it's a really common phrase, right? Or something you hear about quite a bit. Can money buy happiness? And probably most of you, if not all of you, are bought into this idea of like, oh, well, money can't buy happiness. And I agree that that's mostly true, right? There, there are some nuances to the answer to this question that isn't as simple as can money make you happy, right? And for anyone who's really, really been broke or not had any money, you can definitely see that um, poverty can produce unhappiness. So it's not so much that there's a one-to-one -one correlation like, oh, if you have more money, you're instantly going to be happier. But there is a little bit of truth to the fact that you can get some happiness with money. So let's kind of dig into the details of, of what I'm actually talking about here. So let's first start by talking about what happiness is, right? And happiness is basically your experiences paired with the way that you evaluate those experiences, right? So it's your experiences and the evaluations. So having money allows you to change some of your experiences, for example, you know, if you have enough money or make enough money, you don't really have to worry about paying rent. But if you don't and, and you're not able to make ends meet, then you have to really think about and spend time stressing about how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to make sure that I have enough money to do these certain things? So up to a certain point, money increases happiness because it allows you to sort of buy your way out of these lower level or more basic needs. And there's a lot of research to back that up, right? Up to a certain point, happiness does increase with higher income now the exact number you know there's some debate there's some different studies or whatever but in general having enough money to cover your basic expenses and not have to worry about that does produce one-to-one -one happiness right you are going to generally be happier when you don't have to worry about how you're going to pay for your next meal because on the flip side of it if you can't figure out how you're going to pay for your next meal that's a very stressful event that produces a lot of unhappiness now once you get past sort of this point of well, here's the ways that I can use money that really eliminate some of these very unpleasant states or things about uh, that I have to think about, then it gets a little bit more tricky. So going back to our definition of happiness, right? It's your base experiences and the way that you evaluate them. Well, once you get past some of those initial experiences, it gets a little bit trickier, right? For starters, uh, no amount of money is going to change the way that you evaluate experiences, right? You can get people to help you work on your um evaluations of experiences and how to shape them more positively but it doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to in the same way um, you can potentially spend money on more positive experiences but that doesn't mean that it will and in fact sometimes having a lot of really nice experiences lead you to a place where you experience more negativity or stops you from being able to sort of manage some of the lower level more common negativity so this is where other factors start to sort of weigh in more than just money uh, let me give you a couple examples. So money might allow you to buy healthier food and that's more convenient, but it doesn't necessarily mean you will, right? It doesn't mean that just because you're able to afford sort of these nicer foods that, that, that they're things that you actually want. So you may start to feel, you know, sick or whatever else comes along with not eating healthy and the money doesn't really have anything to do with it. Another example is, you know, more money might allow you to have more time with your friends and family, right? You can not worry about it. Or on the flip side, what you have to do, the amount of work that you have to do to make more money may actually reduce the amount of time you spend with your friends and family. So that could easily either add to your happiness or detract from it, depending on what the situation is. Another piece is, you know, you can use money to do things like, oh, I can go get a spa treatment or whatever else, but it's not going to do things like teach you how to manage sort of uh, your mind when it's unruly or how to manage intrusive thoughts. So again, you can pay people to coach you to do these things but having money doesn't necessarily mean you will do that right so different from sort of these more basic things which is just like if you have money and you don't have food you're probably going to use money to buy food if you have money and don't have housing right you you naturally know some of the experiences and basically everyone universally spends their money on some of these these basic experiences but some of the other experiences that we can sort of use to increase our happiness aren't necessarily as intuitive or as necessary and by necessary i just mean that you have to do them to survive so i could give a million more examples but i think the point is pretty clear uh money can buy happiness to a degree but at a certain point you really have to make much more conscious decisions 
about how you spend your time and the things you choose to invest in if you want to optimize your happiness. At these higher income levels, money helps you have more options to kind of figure out what's going to make you happy or not, but it's still up to you to actually take action on that and use that money in a way that will produce happiness. And then at a certain level of income, you know that the amount of money doesn't really matter because it's not influencing you know you already have all the freedom you need to make whatever choices you want so then having more you know going from 1 billion to 2 billion doesn't change anything because uh even if you're choosing the best happiest options you haven't unlocked more options by increasing your wealth by even more than that but that's that's a number that uh it's probably not ever going to be a problem for anyone watching these videos and myself included so hopefully that helps give you an idea of if money can buy happiness here's a couple of reflection questions one, how might you change your relationship with money to focus on happiness? Two, how might you spend money to be happier in the long term? So again, hopefully that helps. Money does help with some of these basic necessities and then it does actually help above that, but you have to consciously choose the things that are going to help change your experiences or make your evaluations of those experiences more positive. That's all I've got for this video. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, topics I'm gonna cover, throw them down in the box below. I'll get to them as soon as I can and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please take a second to subscribe as it really helps out a lot. If you're looking for more content, there's all sorts of information over at howtohappy.com. And if you want something a little bit more condensed and concise, I've also written the book Mindscaping, which is essentially a framework for optimizing happiness. So we'll have the link there as well. And that's all I've got. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.